Hello and welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is, should be quite a quick video, hopefully. I've had a few inquiries now of how I go about sharpening these spoon knives. Now, you may or may not know I'm completely self-taught and I would say that this was one of the hardest things to get your head around so I can understand where you're coming from. They are quite fiddly to, um, to do. The way that I do it isn't necessarily the best way to do it. It's the way that I found easiest to do it. So um, I'll impart that and um, yeah, you can give it a go and see how you get on. But I pretty much learned by looking at other people's ways of doing it and then um, tried different ways, blunted lots and lots of knives and um, yeah, then come up with this way of doing it. So when I say sharpening, I'm more about talking about how I strop them to keep them sharp. If you, um, I mean, if you're gonna be spoon carving stuff with bark on and stones in it, then you may be looking at sharpening these things fairly regularly. But to be honest with you, as long as you keep stropping it often, um, I very, very rarely have to sharpen any of my tools because the strop keeps it nice and sharp. Um, as soon as it starts going off, give it a strop and it's back again. So um, occasionally there'll be something, some it will snap and you have to do it. But um, yes, mainly it's strop work. So here we go. So firstly, what newfangled toys do I use to sharpen these things with? Pretty straightforward, standard stropping. This one's got, I've had this one fairly recently actually, but it's um, this one's got the like suede leather one side, which you pile up with your soap. And then on the other side, which is quite handy, is um, the other side of the leather. And actually, I've never bothered with that before, but that does um, really, really, uh, it's called Keen Edge. And it does, it really does um, make a little bit of difference at the end there. So um, yeah, recommend one of those if you can get old, get older one or make yourself. And then that obviously does the outside of the um, knife. And then you, in theory, you can get a small burr on the inside of the, um, of the curve of the knife. And that's all I use is a piece of dowel. I stick it in a drill and then run the soap up and down just to get a little bit of um, grit on the actual um, wood itself. And that's what I use. You could go to the trouble of putting leather, wrapping it round and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, it's going to do the same thing. So all you're doing on the inside is just taking that burr off. And to be honest with you, I just have to hunt around to find that one because I very rarely actually do that. Mainly, I just uh, sharpen the outer edge and it's kind of enough. Um, when you're honing it, it's you're not really going to push much of a burr over. So it's, um, yeah, don't I'll use it very often if I'm brutally honest. But um, yes, so... That's the tools. I mentioned the soap, different colors, different grades, super fine, fine. Got a green one around here somewhere that's not so fine. Um, yeah, so let's get started on the actual um, honing of these knives then. Right, so here we go. So the super fine I tend to use with, I've got one of these for these little tiny um, gouges and stuff, flex cut ones. And um, I tend to use that on those because they're so small. It just seems right that you're using the finer stuff. I tend to use on the most of my knives and stuff, this blue, which seems to um, do a, a nice job. As you can see, there's a little bit on there. So um, yeah, load her up a little tiny bit. Don't go mad, you don't need masses of the stuff. That's what I found anyway. Obviously, there's going to be some left on there from the last time you did it. So, um, so there's two ways of doing it. Uh, I'll show you the um, the easier way to start with, um, and I think it's probably the best way to start. It's kind of how I made a start at doing it, um, and that is to hold hold the um, the knife like this. Obviously, you've got um, a bird's eye view there, looking right down. So it's all about trying to find your angles and getting your angles right so if you can see there hopefully you can see 
there would be um, not enough angle, but there you can kind of see that that's then touching. You don't really need to be looking down the side. You can kind of see from there that that's um, about the right angle. It's kind of just a bit of getting used to um, getting used to it. But um, yeah, so the way I kind of started with this is just like you do with any other knife and go down and down and down. So do that first bit, because that, that first bit's pretty straight there. So give that a good go. And then I kind of move it up a touch, just so you're gonna, you know that you're gonna overlap, keeping that angle the same, so there, and then go like that and just rotate it slightly as you go in. So basically what you're doing is you're doing small sections at a time. Hopefully that makes sense. So then get to that point and then I'd go back a touch and then go around that way. And you'll get to a point where you can't kind of go any further. Obviously you need to do more than this. I, I'll talk to you about um, how I get over the boredom of doing this in a minute. Um, so you get to that, that point there and then I switch the way I hold it and go back underneath and hold it that way. And then I come keeping that angle straight again. So you're going oh, about there. And then you're going like that. And then roughly where you finish, go back a touch. You know that you've overlapped and then go the last bit. And then that last bit there is almost flat. So I tend to kind of just finish that bit off like that. So then when you've finished that, flip your sides and then you can go back and do that again. So on this side, what I'll do is I'll just show you how I would, because um, obviously I was going quite slowly then to show you how I would do it. But um, basically, I would, this, this is pretty much how I would do it using that technique in real life. I would do a bit more than this, unless it was really just to give it a little bit of a, you get to that point and then flip over. You're just rotating it a little bit. The trouble is if you go too far, then you kind of start losing your angle. You see it wobbling a little bit as you're going round. So when you first start out, it's probably better to kind of do that and really concentrate on keeping that angle right. This one is a double sided one. So I basically repeat the process, but obviously coming back the other way on the other side. I'm gonna just raise you up a little bit. Come on camera, there we go. Yeah, that's better. So repeat the process, but as I say, coming back the other way and then Get to that point, can't go any further. Otherwise, I'm, it's really awkward. So I flip sides and then I'll finish that side again. So then you grab your little bit of dowel or if you've got a proper um, leather bound one. And then obviously none of this, you're keeping it flat to the um, back of the blade. And then you're just going around like that. And you're just literally going along, but out at the same time. So you're just taking any burr off of the edge of there. Like I say, to be honest, I don't really do this very much. I may do it every now and then just to make sure that I've not built up anything over the edge of it. So that's it, basically. Um, on this one, somebody thought of putting a sharp edge on the end of there. I ground that off. The only purpose I can see for that is to stick it in my hand every now and then when I lose concentration. So um, yeah, I've took the end of that off. 
Um, so that's that's not a, a sharp end anyway. But I mean the same principle. If it were a sharp end, you could just kind of come over the end, and then you'd be giving it that sort of thing to sharpen the edge. But like I said, I prefer that to be um, blunt anyway. So this one's a single-sided knife, but the principle's exactly the same, only you do it once. So um, you've got a longer flat edge on here. So um, same principle. And then that way, that way, until you get to the point where you can't go any further, flip round the other way. And then you can go right the way round until you make it down to the other side and then again same principle keep it super flat and then come round and you should have a pretty sharp edge on there then so that's technique one once I've mastered that I now sharpen a different way rightly or wrongly but it works and I hold the knife like that. And I do the same thing, but from that angle, I can just go and you, you kind of get the feel of the angle. We've done it loads of times. You know where that angle is. And then you see, I've just raised that slightly there. And again, and again, and again, until I get right the way round, my arm's in the way of the camera. And then I go round. So then flip over. So I've literally got my got it in my hand like that. Nice firm grip. Get your angle right. And then just you're pushing away from yourself like that. Like that. And then you can, once you get really confident, start off right up the end here and go round. And then you're doing it all of the blade in one sweep. razor blade so that's pretty much how I sharpen these fellas um, just a quick word on any um, any blade really if you um, if you're new to it it's a bit of advice that somebody gave me once if you look directly down at a blade and move it in the light like this hopefully you can't see any little flecks of light. If you see a little white dot reflecting black from you, that's the light coming down, hitting a flat spot. Now it's only probably a tiny, tiny, tiny flat spot. I thought we caught one there then, but it's literally like a minute little dot and it's basically where the um, edges haven't completely uh, met. Now, what you're aiming to do is that you don't see any flat spot there at all. It's just a clean line that goes all the way around. If there's anything reflecting back at you, you need to go at it again. That demonstrates, hopefully, hopefully you can see it, there's a tiny, tiny little light refracting back off of that. And that's an indication that you haven't quite met the edge and there's a flat spot on the actual blade. If, you, if you've got a, um, a magnifier and look right down close on it, you would see that there's um, a tiny little flat spot and that's what the light's refracting off. So um, yeah, hopefully that's given you a little bit of um, advice about how the best way to sharpen these things. There's loads and loads of videos out there. Um, I've looked at quite a few of them and um, everyone seems to have their own way of doing it and that's fine, that's really good. Um, I've tried lots of them and those three methods that I've said there um, looks at literally starting off really concentrating on your angles and just doing a bit at a time 
and then flip your hand around when you get a bit more confident and then you can get that whole sweep of it smoother you get that sweep and the, the better you can keep that angle the better it's gonna the better it's gonna go yeah so finally um i have got a um a record power whetstone with a buffer on the end um if they go over too far and they, they really really you're having to work really hard to um get these things up it is worth putting them on that but it's the same principle it's just about holding that angle straight and um work it to try and get that um that edge back again i try and avoid to sharpen things if i can help it because um yeah you end up with um problems this one's looking like it could do with a little bit of a sharp and i've just seen another little refraction there so um yeah it's getting there so on that note um the same principle pretty much applies if you're using a whetstone so you're going to do it in a, a in the same way to be honest i would probably stay concentrating and use that method when um actual doing the sharpening on a stone because obviously if you get it wrong you're going to knacker up your um your angle and then it's um back to square one again so if you're just giving it a little bit of a um sharpen uh i would use that method where you're kind of just doing it in sections and really concentrating on keeping that angle straight and then um if you are using a whetstone obviously you will end up with a burr so you'll need a um i haven't got one here i don't know where it is actually but um you'll want something a, a small stone uh, that you can take off of that um, burr and then obviously finish it off with um, some sort of a way of buffing that back again uh, with either with this or with one with a leather binding um, hopefully I've covered everything there I can't think of anything else that I would add to that um, so hopefully you found the um, the video useful um, happy to answer any questions if anyone's got any um, like I say I'm not an expert there's lots of ways of doing this it's just the way that I've reliably kept these things sharp but it does take a lot and a lot of practice um, Claire my partner's um, still learning these things and quite often she's like sharpen that for me can't get right around it it just takes a lot of perseverance and a lot of time to get, get that um, edge right each time um, one thing I will say, when I sharpen knives, and I will do a video about sharpening um, flat knives. That was one thing I was going to say, actually. Um, I can't remember who I was watching, but I watched somebody once, and um, they used a technique to stop the boredom, mainly, but also to make sure that you're, sh you're buffing on equal sides. So, um, count to ten. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Flip over and come back the other way, 10. And then flip back and go back 9. Come back, flip over, come back 9. Then 8. Then 7. Obviously 8 back that way. 7. 7. 6. 6. It's a lot of sharpening, but boy, do they, you know, it, it literally gives, you, gives your mind something to focus on and make sure that you're um, doing a nice equal uh, side to it. And then when, once I get down to one, I go um, 10 times that way. And literally every time it's like a, a razor blade you could shave with. So um, it, it avoids you kind of going, oh, that's enough. It really sort of makes you knuckle down and make sure that you do enough to get it to the, to the point where it needs to be. Um, the reason I say that is because obviously you can do, this, do something similar with um, with the uh, spoon knife too so um i would tend to sort of count so i'd do um probably i don't know five 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 and then go back around and do four four something like that just whatever it is make sure that you're doing something so you know one where you are and also two that you're being um strict with keeping on going because actually you uh, this the um soap's got tiny tiny fine grit in it so you're not taking much off each time you're doing this so you do need to keep going and persevere with it 
And um, yeah, the results you can get are really, really good. So like I say, I hope you found that useful. Um, if you've got any questions, ask away in the comments, whether I'll actually be able to answer them or not, I don't know. I'm not, you know, I've never been taught to do this. This is just me learning and finding the best way to do it. Um, but I'm happy to have a go and help anyone if you're really having um, problems keeping them sharp. Um, and uh, if you have got anything, stick it in the comments and um, like if you like it. And um, yeah, if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. I'm going to try and do lots of these little videos, uh, especially some short, useful little ones like this. I'll do well on um, sharpening flat blades as well. And um, yeah, keeping me chisels and all that sharp. So uh, yeah, thanks again. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.